Hello and welcome to another big conversation where we debate all the hot topics. I'm here with Craig and Emma and this week we're talking about whether or not we overreacted to the Leicester result. Now I'm talking about the league result where we lost towards the end. Robert Hood scored a header and it was 1-0. But the fan reaction was a bit much as far as I'm concerned. Emma, I know you kind of agree with that. What yeah. do you think? People were going nuts, right? People were kind of saying that's the end of our season. That People was were literally losing their minds. It. Mm. People were in absolute meltdown after the Leicester result, just saying, it's over, we've bottled it, we've done it. Typical, same old Spurs, oh, Europa League football, not even going to finish top six. I mean, the, some of the stuff that I saw, there was even some potch out chat and you were like, what? That's you mad. have that got is mad. to be kidding me. Mm. Perspective, people. Perspective. Nobody's saying that it was a good result to lose to Leicester. Mm. Of course it wasn't a good result. However, all of those people that were trying to say it was a God-given, foregone conclusion that we should beat Leicester, Leicester are joint top of the league. And they're yeah. joint top of the league for a reason. Mm. You can't turn around and say, oh, we should be beating teams like that at home every week. Well, well, well no. We, we wouldn't say that about Arsenal. Why would we say that about Leicester, who are on the same points? Mm. Exactly. You know, Is it a bit arrogant of us? I mean, to just assume that we should easily get three points Completely. in that game? Completely. Completely arrogant of us and the, the, the thing is is that you need to take it in the context of a whole season we've lost three times this season every single time we've not gone on some sort of scary losing run afterwards we just bounced back with another win did yeah. the same against Sunderland on Saturday it's all about perspective if you said bef before the start of the season we'd get to January and we'd have only lost three times you'd have bitten your hand off completely yeah. for it you'd be desperate for that we've never had that kind of form in the Prem in recent years yeah, Enter exactly. Craig. Oh, here we go. Enter here Craig. Here we go. No, no, do you know what? I agree with you. Um, <laughs> the people the people that are just being absolutely delusional, saying potch out and say, acting like it's the end of the world, the end of our season, that's absolutely ridiculous. However, I will say the manner in which we lost, you know, conceding the 82nd minute yeah. to a hoof header was absolutely diabolical. Yeah, no, one's, and, and, and no and one's disputing that. And you. it's just about the fact that we could have closed the gap. You're playing, when you, when you play the people in and around you, and it's all going to add up at the end of the season, you want to beat the teams around you. If we beat them, we would have been one point behind them. So I think a lot of people, I think just the emotions got the best of a lot of people. Obviously, some people so just took it way too far, but it was very disappointing to lose that game. So is your issue that really it's a six-point game if we're playing Leicester? Because I mean, just knowing that really we could have beat them at the King Power Stadium and then Mahrez scored a goal like out of nowhere, like literally a really great goal from the left against Jambutong right at the end of the game. And really we should have won that game and it was a draw. And then coming back to White Hart Lane, it's a stalemate for the whole game. We've completely battered them if you look at the stats. More possession, more shots on goal, like all of that stuff. And then we end up losing. I can see why people are frustrated. Are they becoming a bit of a bogey team for us, Leicester? They, it does seem like they are. And hopefully, you know, this is going out before the FA Cup rematch. Hopefully we're going to end that with the FA Cup rematch. Please, fingers crossed, because yeah. I'm going to the King Powder Stadium. I don't want to go mm. get all up in the snow and really late. And you don't want to go to Leicester anyway, mate. And, so and, and lose on penalties. No, but um, I just think... In isolation, I think you're right. I think you want to be beating the teams around you, et cetera, Definitely. et cetera, et cetera. But when you look at all the other results that came out of last weekend, yeah. the exception being the Man U, Man U beating Liverpool, yeah. it's not like we've not lost masses of ground. You know, mm -hmm. we're still yeah, yeah, yeah. we're still fourth. We're five points off the top, which is still you know within two wins. When you think that Arsenal are leaders and we've got to play them in a little while, um, I, th I think it's just you know it's hard because obviously when you lose a game the way that we lost the Leicester game the natural reaction to just go, oh, for God's sake, we're so rubbish. I think, given how young our team is, we need to try and rein that reaction in a little bit, which is not to say we should ever be happy if we lose. No one's happy if we lose. But we need to stop looking at every single defeat as an unmitigated disaster. Like, this is a far less bad defeat than the Newcastle defeat was. The Newcastle defeat yeah, was atrocious. Agreed. We played so yeah. badly. I'm all for taking the positives out of things. And I think in because our, our squad and our team is so young, I think they need us to take the positives out of things. So, yeah, it wasn't a great result, but they bounced back straight away. It's done. We're still fourth. And it's only happened once in the last few years that the top four now has not been the top four come the end of the year. And that's when Southampton were yeah. here. So this is all very positive. It's a crap result, but let's move on. Uh, but do, you know what, do you know what, though? I think a lot of people as well just thought the game was actually very winnable. It was. Like it was a, it w no one, no one thought it would be easy. It is Leicester, like you said, they've been playing very well. They're joint top, but I think people just they went before that game. They were kind of in a down patch. Well, they haven't scored for like six hours as well. Mm. You got to take that into consideration. They hadn't scored. And then we all thought Vardy was going to be out as well. So yeah. we were all a bit optimistic yeah. of that. And Mars had also dropped off a little bit. They hadn't scored weeks. for six hours, and, and, and they when, broke and that and against us with a hoop header. It was a terrible goal. It you was bad. I mean? That was like, it was. It is. That was bad defending. We've got that's. We all know that's our weak point, is us from corners and set pieces. Also, not helpful if Toby pushes. Yeah. yeah. And it's hard to fault him because he's been so good this season. But I mean, what other was Other than that? that, other than that, yeah. was the performance good against Leicester? Were we a bit what, in, in that game? Yeah. It was good, but do you know what? It, 
a lot of big teams, if you're a big team, you're going to face it. Teams are going to set up away or at your ground not to lose. They're not going to, they're going to have everyone behind the ball and you've got to figure out a way to get through that. You've got to be creative. You've got to use the whip. I felt like in the game, we wasn't using our, our, our fullbacks enough. We wasn't creating yeah. enough whip. We wasn't being very creative in that final third to try and unlock them. And that's what you've got to do. I feel, I feel like when teams set up in that way against us, the ball's too slow. We're not playing that quick one touch passing football. Do you know what I mean? We need to do that. We need to just flick it, take a bit more risks and be more creative. And I think we're lacking that in... in but when again, that comes down to a question of experience as well as much as anything. Yeah. And this is where it is going to be tough for our boys this season because they are very young. And in terms of to be in this position, this kind of form, this sort of, you know, club that's now being held up as one of the contenders, our guys have not been in that position before. And they've not been in a position where teams are constantly coming not to lose against us. Mm. So they, they've got to learn in the same way that we're all learning to, like, be accepted as one of the favourites. Yeah. Like... They've got to learn how to deal with that and they've got to learn to break that down. That's not going to happen. And they are I know, but, but if our ambition is top four, they've got to learn it like now. Because if you want to be in that top yeah. four, you have to figure that out. Well, they do you know. Make top they four. do know. Because in his post match interview, Ben Davies said, We've got to yeah. figure out how to play of against teams who play long to. balls. Because we don't know how to do long balls. I can tell you, if they don't figure well. out, we won't get top four. They've got to figure it out. But because Because everyone's touting us as a good team. Everyone's seen we're a good yeah, team now. We are a good team. But this is again the thing where we maybe need to just calm down a little bit we are fourth we haven't fallen out of the top yeah. four we're clear in fourth as well like the two points clear we're not there on goal difference or anything like that you know in previous seasons we'll have been down in fifth six at this point mm. you know it I, I totally understand that we need to do it but give them some credit like we're still there but that the leads moment. to the point i don't know if you're gonna bring this up <laughs> but the <laughs> 12th see. man i like, mean hmm. i mean the 12th man <laughs> next on the list the 12th man <laughs> like i feel like our fans are playing such an imperative role in our, our players not performing well at home. They're creating this awful atmosphere where it's like silent in there and every touch is under scrutiny. Do you know what I mean? There's pressure on every ball you play. I mean, in the first, first 45 minutes against Sunderland, we were awful. I mean, we gave the ball away a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Ericsson's first touch was poor. Harry Kane gave the ball away. Dembele was misplacing passes. It was just, it wasn't good enough. And I felt like that's because the atmosphere and the pressure was there on the players to get a result. We need to kind of cheer them on. We don't do that enough. Now, what's interesting about that is that Adebayor said that himself about a year ago. Is and he he's now it. scared to play for Spurs because the fans get on everyone's back too much and put too much pressure on. And we slammed Adebayor well, for saying that. Well, that's, because, a, that's because Adebayor, this is though... Right? He didn't make the effort. But these guys... Got it in one. That's the thing. Adebayor was not the person to come out and say that because yeah. he is not the kind of player who makes the effort, who makes it you know, look to the fans like he's really trying yeah. and he's really busting his balls to, yeah. to get us a goal. You can't level that criticism at any of our current team. And I agree with you mm. that something about the atmosphere at White Holly needs, needs to change. Like, you know, I'm a season ticket holder. Um, I sit in the shelf, so we try and sing. Like, you know, everyone stops at, at some point or other. You know, we're all guilty of it. But I do feel like it's this thing I said about patience and about, like, inexperience. If those boys hear us not trying to cheer them on and being silent and being flat, it's going to be harder for them and they're not used to dealing with that level of pressure and that level of expectation. We really need to cut them some slack Do you know what? and we really need, get behind them. We need to take a page from like foreign fans because when I watch uh, football abroad, even when their team's losing, people are still cheering. Do you know what I mean? Like cheering their team on no matter the result. Like you've got to do that. When we lost to Chelsea, I saw something quite good. Like I was at well, uh, Wembley for the Carling Cup final and even when we lost, everyone was still cheering. Everyone's still happy that we got to a cup yeah. final yeah, yeah, yeah. and we put in a valiant effort even though we lost 2-0. We, we tried and everyone's young. If they did that for every single That's game, exactly there'd it. be no pressure. That's exactly it because we do it against the big teams. Whenever we've got a big game, like say Man United are coming to town or Chelsea or Arsenal or whatever, that atmosphere is always yeah. there and it's you know belting for the 90 minutes. We need to do it against the small teams now as well because what we need to accept is if we're really pushing for this top four or potentially, dare I say it, we're in with a title challenge, Every single game matters. Every single game needs to be like a cup final now. And that's from our point of view yeah. and our performance as fans, as well as the guys on the pitch. And I really think, like, we really need to make the effort. Can I how just how many, sorry, how many games have we lost at home? Two. Two, Two yeah. How many, <laughs> how <laughs> how think many, about that how many have we lost away? One. I, I guarantee if you ask any of those Spurs fans where they prefer playing right now, the majority of them would say away from home. Mm. I guarantee it. 
Well, can I just say, the, the way the fans got on Tom Carroll's back yeah, that was, was absurd. I mean, unacceptable from my point of view. People, I mean, he'd, mis he'd misplaced one pass and people were screaming, get him off. And also, like, he had yeah. a shot from the edge of the box that wasn't perfect and yeah, people went right. mad. And I thought, if that was Deli Alley, you'd have cheered it and clapped that's it. That's not right. It's just you're on Tom Carroll's back and he's never going to improve and feel like he can flourish if you're just going to go mad at him yeah, every time he's right. done anything wrong. Well, completely. He's a young I, I kind guy. Of, I kind of thought like we'd sort of... I don't want to say grown out of that bit. It's not the right phrase, but like you know, we did that with Lamella a lot in the beginning, and like you can understand it more because yeah. like, I had this massive price tag. Da, da, da. And as soon as we settled down and stopped pushing on him so much, he immediately got better. Like, why would you then repeat the same mistakes with Tom Carroll? Like, he's so he is he's a young player and he's developing. They are all developing. Like, they're gonna make mistakes. But you know, senior players can make mistakes as well. Like, why yeah. why feel the need to get on the youngsters' backs a bit and say, oh, they're not good enough. They should be nowhere near the first team. Give them a bit of encouragement. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Well, this has been the big conversation. Let us know if you think Spurs fans, which is you, overreacted to the Leicester result. Do you think we can do them in the FA Cup replay? Should we be more positive? Is there an atmosphere issue? I don't know. Do you go to the games? Let us know your thoughts. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you are new. Give us a like. Follow us on Twitter at Spurred on TV and see you soon. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Spurverse. This is part one, a transfer 